Hey YouTube, it's PE2 Finger back with uh, story time, The Tower, Part 2. This is the big tower. This is continued from another video, Story Time, The Tower, Part 1. I would encourage you to check that out. So, I had spoken with my singer friend. Uh, I was in a band playing bass guitar back in this is... Oh, when would this have been? Oh my goodness, this is going to be impossible. 86, maybe? This is between 84 and 87. So I call up Danny. He said, I said, where's the stuff missing from the first tower? What, what did you guys do? It's all gone. And he told me, relax, there's a new tower. Uh, I ended up hooking up with him going out there. And we parked. It's a subdivision that borders on a golf course. And it's at an intersection where there's two main roads. Further down is the Dominic's Food Store, where we worked. That's where I met him. Across the street from that is an old folks' home. And then down the street, uh, there's the, the real long stretch is the, uh, is the golf course. And it's at the end of the golf course, this tower. It's a water tower, three-sectional tower. It's huge. No longer in use, so it's empty. And then south, there is a school with a fire department across the street. Well, it's, it's actually, it's a little south of that. So... We drive out there, we park in the subdivision, and he says it's not cool to park right by the place. So we park a couple blocks away and just walk over there like nothing's up. And walk right past these houses, nice houses on a corner. And uh, like super obvious, going right to it. Instead of like kind of sneaking around, we went right to it. And there they had the ladder from the first tower, which was a pole of aluminum, hollow, about that thick in diameter. With the head rungs through it that you could climb, you know, just the perfect length level, like a regular ladder you would climb, just rungs of solid aluminum. And then at the top of that, there was a hook. It was like cut out of a rectangular piece of aluminum, and they had cut out uh, a slot where it was welded somehow. I think it was aluminum. I don't know. Can you weld aluminum? I'm just going to go with that because it was light. So, and it didn't, it didn't ever rust. So this thing, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there was some big bolts that held, lag bolts that held it together. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, but I really think it was, because I seem to remember, the, like, TIG welding, like it was welded where the, uh, the handles, the, the, the rungs were. So we're in the bushes, they pull out the ladder, run up and hook it up to the first rung, which starts perfectly, like, let's say it's 20 feet. And you climb up. You get to the where the rungs start, and you continue climbing, and it's like about like an angle, and then it starts getting straight. And there's every so often you'll run into a spot where there's a vertical or a horizontal uh, tubes that go around to support, and then in between those are like X's of some kind of like thick steel, almost like a cable. It's like maybe not a half inch thick, maybe a half inch thick like kind of cable, and that's bolted in for support. So, and this is all important. We're going to get back to all these details. They serve a purpose of the story. So we climb all the way up, and then, you know, it straightens out. It's no longer kind of at an angle. And then you're really like, this is, like, really serious. Like, without a question, if you fall, you're going to die. It's one of those don't look down. Just keep looking up. And then you get up to where you have to come, uh, you come out of a hole, and there's a... Uh, steel rungs that go around it, like a platform that go around. Not the middle, it's a little lower, and that has a arm rest. It's like welded steel, and you could walk around this tower. So, of course, Steve Mitchell, the guy, you know, you have to watch the first video. He, of course, had painted a giant white skull this time because of the color of the tower. Or, no, you know what? The white skull was on the first tower, which was black and rusted. The white skull, the the black skull was painted on this one because it was like a powder blue, this tower. So he paints this giant skull facing the main highway, of course. So then the police know that, hey, there's kids up in the tower. And uh, you walk around this thing, and, you know, he would bring, there would be girls there, like teenage girls that, you know, I mean, and mothers and dads, this, consider what I'm saying. If your kids are all playing video games and 
you're going to hassle them and yell at them and give them a hard time for what they're doing. Think about what these girls were doing back in the 80s, climbing this tower. So there was another set of rungs that continued to go all the way up to the top of this thing. And when you got up there, when it started turning, this part of the story, it makes my stomach turn because the one guy, the singer, he used to sit up there and slide himself, like see how far he could get to the edge where if he would keep going, he would fall. Now, of course, he would probably, he would have to grab on. I don't know if he would go far enough out to fall completely off, but that that was a game he used to like to play. And I mean, I, I had climbed stuff. I was used to climbing the high tension wires by my house. We used to have this game of throwing stuff off of it, throwing flaming gasoline off the top of the tower, playing a game called Smoky Bear, where the neighborhood kids have to run around. You know, hopefully they don't get any flying flaming gasoline on them as they're down there. But you know, my brother Eric, who would he would take a pole like a broom and duct tape a jelly jar full of gas and climb the tower and then light that gas and then he can't burn gasoline off of the top of the power tower. This is just brilliant minds. So, uh, and that reminds me, I'm going to, they used to sell these, it was a giant spring and it had uh, uh, some kind of flame, flame proof plastic on it. It was a tunnel, a kitty tunnel. You could compress it and tie it up. Or then you would, un for storage, and then untie it, and boing, it would come out, and it was green, and it was like kids could crawl through it. It was like a kitty tunnel. So I got one of those, and I spray-painted eyes on it and made these cardboard teeth, big, sharp teeth in the mouth, and I would tie a rope on onto my bike and have it chase me. And it would go, when it would go, it would kind of go like a, like a caterpillar action, and I would go, ah, ah, like, you know, it's, it's, it's after me <laughs> riding my bike. And uh, my brother saw that, and he he got the idea to go out on Wolf Road, and when cars, speeding cars, would come down the hill, and he would pull pull this thing, and it would come out on the road, and people would have to lock up the brakes, and then we would continue pulling and run into the woods. We would be hiding in the weeds, you know. So we, of course, that got old, and we started taking that and climbing the high tension lines. Which we had a sky slide. We found this cable, like big, thick cable. And we tied that around one to the other and then kept twisting it with some two-by-fours to tighten it and got it super tight in between the two tires. And then we got this plastic tubing and cut that with a hacksaw down. And you would snap that plastic, climb up there and snap that plastic on. You would throw it up the line and then uh, it wasn't fast enough going down. So my brother went in and got some of my mom's big candles and this was back when candles were, they were expensive, it was a big deal. And he would go down and hold this candle and we waxed that sucker, boy. Whew, you didn't want to go down it after it had just been waxed because you would end up, you would be flying down that thing. And it was at a good angle too. So uh, the tower is turning into multiple tower stories. We, we got this monster, the tube, the uh, tunnel, we had that up on top of the uh, power lines. <laughs> this is my, my folks are at Bible study. <laughs> this is what was going on. And uh, throwing, throwing it off the power line. <laughs> and it gets, after about the third time, it got stuck on the high tension wires and it was just up there and it wasn't going anywhere. And like we tried everything. We were out there. That was how with the gas started. Now I'm remembering the gas. That's, we tried to burn it off. Because we didn't, our parents would see, and they would know. <laughs> you know, that was, that was <laughs> uh, so, I don't remember, oh, I do, I remember it was up there for a couple of days, and the the lines, like, uh, here was the one that was right by our house, and there's a long way, and there's another one. The lines kind of sag, so it, with wind overnight, it got, because they came home, they just didn't see it. It was dark when they came home, and they didn't look up. The house was kind of right there, and there's some trees, some big tree. So they didn't see it, luckily, because my dad, that, oh, man, we would have gotten, <laughs> we've been missing teeth. So that, luckily enough, it blew, and it uh, it went down to the middle, in between, at the low point of the two, tar two uh, towers. And then uh, that next morning, it was summertime, I got up early, and I ate my food, and I said, I'm going to the pool, Mom. She says, okay, and I got on my bike and rode to the pool, and uh, I went in the back and looked, and there it was. Oh, man. 
So I was there all day until they closed for supper, and I, cause I was terrified. I came home, and there was a, a Commonwealth Edison truck, and they had it in the truck. They had they had went up there with chalk sticks with a bucket truck and removed it, cause somebody had called and said, "Look, there's this, <laughs> there's this giant monster, there's a fang tooth uh, tunnel monster <laughs> on your power lines." So they went up there and knocked it off, and I, it was in the back of the truck. I saw it. They were driving down the pipeline, and I came up on my bike, and I seen them, and I was like, oh, get low. They're going to know it's me, you know. So um, back to Dan Phillips sliding. Ooh, I said his name. Um, that's not his name. Uh, uh, anyway, back to the singer friend of mine sliding and almost going off the edge. He's bringing these girls, and we're going in to the – you would – open this hatch and these big huge ropes would you know thick rope would be going down into this thing and you have to climb down it and it, the echo was incredible the amount of time like if you moved your foot because it was all rusted in there and if you moved your foot it would make that noise and that would echo and echo and echo and echo and we would be up there they would bring backpacks people would have multiple backpacks full of cases of beer boom boxes the Led Zeppelin, and then they're uh, banging on the outside of it. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. People are inside dropping acid, ooh, you know, and the rust is falling off the ceiling. And they had they had candles. They had brought a bunch of candles and they put them around the hole. Because if you were drunk and you were up there stumbling around with your girlfriend waltzing, she'd fall down the chute, you know. And there was like there was like bolts and nuts that stuck in that chute that those would be tearing tearing your through your wrists when you tried to stop yourself. So it was always very shuddersome. Like you would look at that hole and be like, "Don't fall down the hole." So we had that surrounded with candles. And one of the tricks that we would do this is the coolest thing that I ever heard in in my life. By so far, I can't tell you how unbelievably cool and worth it it was to be up there. And I don't know how you could ever recreate this, and I don't know if anyone ever has heard this besides me and the few people that heard it. But you would take the wax from the candle. This was back when they had pull tab beers. So you would pull the tab, and that ta that tab would stay on the little thing. You would put the, the tab. So you would have the circular thing, the tab that you would pull, and then the, the remaining aluminum that's shaped like that from the hole. You would bend that to be straight like a spoon and scrape up some of the liquid wax out of the candle. And then you would hold that above the flame and vaporize it till it caught fire and throw it down the hole. And that droplet would sing. It would create a tone. Like we used to do this with Hot Wheel tracks. You would light it and melt it, and it would go vroom, vroom, vroom. And it's like this laser sound. It's the coolest sound. Imagine having four kids, each one with their own droplet, throwing it down that hole. And instead of going, it would go. And there would be four of them. So they were all like chorusing kind of a different note. And then coming out into that reverberant thing. This sounded like angels flying up to heaven, praising God with the, their richest voice. It, this sound, I cannot tell you what of a rapturous orgasm for the ears this sound was. We would do it. We would all get set up, and we would get counted in. Three, two, one, throw them. And four guys would do it, and it would it would take a while, too. It was like before... That whole echoing process would stop. We're talking like 45 seconds before the last tail of the sound finally disappeared. And then we would all just go from a cackle to a, a roarious laughter. Like gut holding, like tears coming to your eyes laughing so hard because it was so beautiful. The sound was absolutely incredible. And, I mean, the LSD kind of tends to make things a little funnier than it is. So, uh, <laughs> the other thing was there are two ropes eventually with the big knots that you could sit on them. You, they had tied these knots in them, and they were waist high. So you would have one, two people running and go like a swing, 
One person would jump on and the other one would run, pushing the rope. Because what you would do is you would start out, one person would go to one extent of the uh, globe, and the other person would be in the other. And you would, you would, uh, you would wind those together. Something just popped up. You would wind you would wind those ropes together so it made a um, like a love knot like a uh, like a braid, and then you would go the other way. You would turn around and go the other way, and one person would be on the ground running, <laughs> and the echo and coming out, and the other person would be sitting at an angle, flying through that dome with the candles burning in the center, and then that person would land and run while the other person would go up, and you would do this at an angle with these ropes. And you would be flying at, at this angle in there, and you're in this dome that's lit by candlelight. It's all, it's all rust-colored, and it's got yellow light in there. And it was just like, I mean, maybe it was the LSD again. But uh, that was really incredible. Absolutely incredible. And these are these experiences are you just can't, you can't imagine it until you're there and inside a water tower participating in these sorts of insane activities so um, I remember hearing stories of one particular girl named Jill that she climbed uh, up and down the rope she was fit she didn't have much fat on her body but they were saying how she was just like she just went nuts when they brought her in there she was swinging around on the swings and up and down the climbing it and just like had just such an incredible time and then I went up there it was me a guy named J.B., we'll call him J.B., and then that wasn't his name, and then another guy, Roy, we'll call him Roy. And Roy was uh, not fit. And we get up there, we climb down, he slides down the rope, and uh, we're in there, we do our thing, and it's time to go. So it's Roy, me, and J.B., and Roy, we get a third of the way up the rope, and he's going, I can't do it, I can't do it, because his arms were small, and he was he a was big guy. He was had a little bit too much fat on his body for this particular exercise. And he starts shaking and shaking and shaking, and I'm going, you can do it, you can do it, you know? And then all of a sudden, here his butt comes, come, hits me in the head, and pushes all three of us down the rope. So JB climbs up, and then I'm like, I'm going to put my hands here, and you're going to push off of my hands, and you're going to get out of here, you know. And he's shaking, I can't do it, I can't do it, and then, bam, again. Oh, you know what, there was another guy, there was Roy's older brother, who was big. Because J.B. was, at the time, he was, no offense, he was real skinny, real skinny arms, and I was too, I was a string bean, I didn't have any muscles, I was terrible. So what we ended up doing, there was three three attempts where I went and tried to uh, hold him, and then I had the other guy underneath me trying to hold me and have him going up, and each time he went less. He was just like, I can't do it. And we're like, you have to come. Like, we're not going to leave you here, you know. You ha But we can't stay. you got to go, you know. So eventually we... Um, he went back down, and I'm like, tie the rope, or we were going to pull him out. Tie the rope around your waist, you know. He's crying down there. So I had to go down again. Throughout the course of the story, I'm up and down this rope more times than, you know. So, and I'm not strong, so I tie the rope around him for him. I had to untie some of the knot that they had made for the swing exercise. And then I climb on top of him and climb out. And then all three of us pull, you know. We would just a little bit at a time getting him out, and it was it was unbelievably challenging because he was really heavy. And like I said, I don't know how much uh, JB was really helping. I know the other guy was really helping because it was his brother, not by blood. I think they, I think maybe that he had been adopted. I'm not sure, but either way, he that guy wanted him out of the tomb. And when he got out, he started crying. He was crying, laughing, and he said. If you guys were communist faggot chunkies, I would kiss your feet. Something like that. And he was down. <laughs> we're going, come on, man. we got to get out of here, you know, before the cops come. Because that was my thing. I was always like, you know, don't do, 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 drum solos, you know. To keep it minimal and maybe like park, you know. Um, I had, at the end of one particular night, I had put my keys on 
that we were sitting in this guy's car afterwards, and my keys were on his uh, hood. And he left, and uh, my keys were gone. So my car was parked there for a week. And the whole time I'm going, where are my keys? Where are my keys? I lost them that night. Are they up there? So I had went back. I had climbed up in the tower. I had searched every inch of grass. There's like a lot of activity going around this place by now. It's hot. And I had looked all over. My car's still parked there about half a block away from the place. Not good. And then I finally went back again and walked it out again. And what had happened, the singer guy, Dan, he had gone like five miles an hour through all the turns except for the last main turn. And then he went and turned, and then they fell off. And I found them. They were actually starting to rust in the lawn. Here are my keys. And I walked back. And I, I can't tell you how great of a feeling that was to find my keys. But uh, we're up there this one night. It was um, it was me, the singer, and the guitar player for the band who was really not right in the head. He's a paranormal guy now, and he chases. Uh, he, you can find his videos of him at a uh, baby or they, when babies die. They have the baby cemetery. You'll see him there with a ghost box. When people are coming to mourn their kids, and this guy's there with a Led Zeppelin t-shirt on, like, just get out of here, man. You know, really, really uncool guy. He hangs out at funeral homes. He's, like, trying to talk to the dead guy in there. It's, like, really pathetic life that this guy has. But anyway, he was there, and he kept going, Bonzo, Bonham, Bonzo, Bonham, Bonzo, and you know, boom, on this giant tower. <laughs> There's people living, like, right underneath this thing, and it's uh, it's unbelievably loud when you're up in there, echoing. And, I mean, they can hear it, probably over their TV, you know. So, of course, they called the police, and... We're in there, we're aware that they're there, there more and more activity is happening. Um, this guitar player guy, he's yelling at them. I finally climbed up there and I looked out and all, if, if you've ever seen what sirens, what um, police lights look from above, they look really cool. There's uh, different, <laughs> it might, might have had something to do with the LSD. The, there's uh, reds on one side and blue on the other, and it rotates. But that's all that I saw, because I, I think I went up twice. I went up once, and there was like four to six vehicles. And the second time I went up, it was all that I saw. There was like, they had called in every town around, because we wouldn't come down. He's going, turn the lights off! And they were starting to come up. They had guys that were going to come up and remove us, and that's when they finally came down. And I told them, listen, I'm going to stay. And you guys aren't going to rat me out. There's two of you here. My car is parked way down there, like four turns out. Your car's parked right here. And you owe me one. Because they did. They owed me one where I took the rap and they skated on some stupid thing that I had done. So they agreed. And I remember him yelling, shut the light. They had like these, like the spotlights that they shine that go up in the air like the bat signal. Like those incredible ones that are the size of a truck. And they're shooting these blazer beams at him. And he's going, shut the lights off, you know, because he couldn't see. And uh, so it was this big battle. And the, the guys on the megaphone, calm down, you know. Led Zeppelin's not that good of a band. <laughs> Black Sabbath sucks, <laughs> you know, and uh, saying all kinds of offensive things to them. So finally they came down, and they ended up getting, um, I think he said it was $1,600 he had to pay to get out of it. And it was like trespassing, public endangerment, uh, and direct disobedience of a direct order from the fire marshal was one of the tickets, one of the charges that these two had up against them. So I waited, and I'm tripping, and um, a helicopter came. That's before they came down. That's part of the story I forgot. It was like Pink Floyd, you hear the helicopter. And it kept getting louder and louder and louder and louder. And then they were here. <laughs> we're in this thing up in the air. And this helicopter is like about to land on us. It's like two feet off of the top of this thing. And the pressure is coming from the blades. It's coming into the through the hole. And it's kicking up all the dust and rust debris. 
and the sound is so unbelievable. It's shaking the whole thing. All the rust is falling off the ceiling, and then that cloud of debris comes up and envelops us, and the lights, and I mean, I'm, you know, I'm peeking. <laughs> it, it was incredibly horrifying. It was really, really scary. And then they left, and I mean, I thought they were going to, I thought the guys were going to get out. I thought guys were going to get out of the helicopter and come in and get us. That's what I thought was going on. And uh, so finally, like I said, the other two, the guitar player and the singer, went up, and they bar made some kind of bargain to have them shut the lights off, which they did, and then they climbed down. So I'm waiting up there, and um, it seems like really long, and I would move my foot, because I didn't move, because it was so, anything you did, and it would echo out, you know. And it's all amplified, you know, in my condition. So I moved my foot a couple of times, and it, you know, like, shh, shh, ah, 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 shh, shh. You know, it's echoing up in this thing. And uh, it was horrible. I was so scared, and it doesn't, it, you don't go to a good place when you're in a situation on that drug, and something like this happens. Let, your mind goes through a lot of weird places, and time has a way of expanding where it seems really long. One minute seems like ten, you know. So it was horrible. So uh, I forced myself to wait, and then eventually I went through the process of standing up. When I couldn't stay standing up anymore, I started to slowly move towards the uh, 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 the what do you call it? The la the rope, and then. Uh, I climbed out, popped my head up, looked around, climbed out of it, and then I went around laying, shuffled around, and went around 360 and looked for police. If they had a car, so like, we're going to leave a car here, you know, drinking coffee, staked out, watching for the kid to climb down. And I didn't see anything, and so then I got on the ladder, and I started climbing down, and I hear a siren. And I looked down Wolf Road, and here he's coming up north, so I'm space truck and down the, you know like six rungs at a time flying down this ladder and uh he turns and makes a right at the intersection which the quicker way would i mean he could get there going that way but the quicker way would be to go straight and like what's up and then they pulled into the old folks home some old geezer had had a grabber or something happen where they needed an ambulance because that was the only vehicle that was one vehicle. It was, it was an ambulance. And uh, that happened while I was just starting to climb down the ladder. It was just a coincidence, but man, did that reignite my trauma. My fear went right up through the roof, you know. And as I'm climbing down, the sun's starting to come up. I'm climbing down, because I did wait. <laughs> I waited a long time. I'm climbing down, and I realized that they had taken our ladder. They had unhooked it. I put it on one of the fire trucks and taken off with it. So I went back up to that first level where it's vertical and I James bonded down at an angle on the cross beams. They have that steel I was talking about. It's about a half inch, uh, between a quarter and a half inch thick. What is that? Three eighths, five sixteenths? I don't know. I'm not good with fractions. But it, like there's the four legs of the thing coming up and then they have these uh, platforms that go around the same kind of tubing just to make it stable and in between those they have these X's and even one on the bottom and it's for stability where it's steel that's uh, real tight it's cross members cross beams but they're real they're like thin and it's not cable it was just like round wrought steel and I got like I said I got on that and uh, it wasn't comfortable but uh, I shimmied down the one and then got to the other one and crossed over and went the other way just because I thought that would be cooler and when I got to the ground I didn't even think about it I kissed the ground I got on uh, my hands and knees and I kissed the ground and I got into my car I had a Volvo 142 at the time I got into my car and drove straight home <laughs> and uh, oh, I remember smoking because I hadn't smoked and I was, I needed a cigarette. <laughs> I got straight home, and my mom didn't wake up. My dad, my father had passed away, and I lost my, pa my dad to cancer when I was like uh, 15. It was right before my 16th birthday. So um, 
I started hanging around with the wrong crowd and playing in the band and all that. That's what led me to that point, making that decision that it would be a good idea to go up in that tower. So thank goodness that nobody got hurt. Like I said, I got home. My mom did not wake up. I crept into my room. I remember curling up in the sheets as um, what I felt like. I didn't feel good. I, you know, I needed, I needed some comforting, like a bath and a like a nice tea, some biscuits leading into a omelet, something like that would have been a massage. You know, I just curled up into my bed. In my sheets, I remember how good that felt and laid there reviewing the thoughts of the nightmarish day that I had experienced, the horrible night, how alone I had felt and how scared I was when that helicopter was there and then how worse it got when I was just by myself, not able to move because the fear of any sound, like that whole slow walk thing I did to the ladder, that was really bad. Humans shouldn't have to go through that. That, you know, it... it it says a lot about our illusion of freedom and where we really live, although we do live in the greatest country in the world. I'm not a fool. I love this country. And, of course, they make rules like this for a good reason, you know. And, like, would I ever have ended up there if it wasn't for meeting these people? No, no way. You know, go, that first tower, the story in the first episode where it was a little more innocent, um, even that was, like, really crazy and pushing it for me. But that, the water tower, that was, like, next-level cuckoo stuff. That was crazy. And I got a few more stories like this, really good ones. <laughs> um, we'll see. You know, I mean, I, do I really want to come out and spill my guts? I'm not going to make a memoir book. I lived an interesting life, and I could. If I sat down and really tried to think about it, but that's the thing. My mind is not, I don't, I never had a good memory. My wife has a photographic memory where she can tell you what her aunt was wearing on a specific Christmas, what they had to eat. Certain details she remembers like that, and it's amazing. But if I ask her to put my needle-nose pliers away, it will be gone, and neither of us will ever be able to locate it again. Until years later, we'll find it behind the couch. <laughs> PD2 Finger, peace. Stay safe. And as far as this one goes, I, I want to also say, go ahead and look into it. Um, there are a lot of great water tower videos from the destruction ones to the rescues of people going up, getting caught up there and having to have the fire department come out, people climb up there to bring them down. Cause this is a thing I have looked into it and I've watched it because of my experience. And, uh, you can find some great videos. You know, I went into it looking for the people that are trespassing up there and ended up discovering the destruction of videos, which are equally as enjoyable to consume. Probably more. They're, they're really cool. So, again, uh, if you stuck with this one, it was a good one. And thank you very much for enjoying this with me. And I can let this one go now. To anyone who may have participated in that, man, we were really dumb. <laughs> If any of you guys are watching this, hug your loved ones. Life is short. <laughs>